In this video, I will demonstrate how to perform a simple linear regression in Excel. I will use a trucking company's data set containing 10 driving assignments. Each driving assignment includes the daily travel time and the miles traveled. To develop better work schedules, the company wants to estimate the total daily travel time for their drivers. The company believes that the total daily travel times denoted by Y are closely related to the number of miles traveled in making the daily deliveries, denoted by x. Using regression analysis, we can develop an equation showing how the dependent variable y is related to the, the independent variable x. Again, the dependent variable y is total daily travel time, and the independent variable x is the number of miles traveled. Our goals are finding the regression equation between miles traveled and travel time, analyzing residuals, scatter plot, and p-values, and assessing the model fit or performance using SSR, SST, coefficient of determination, or R-square. We're going to use the simple linear regression as the algorithm, and we're going to use the data analysis tool path in Excel. So here's the tracking company sample data that we mentioned in the lecture. We have 10 driving assignments. Each one has the miles driven and the time of delivery. In order to find the regression equation, we use uh, the Excel's data analysis tool pack. So if you click on the analysis tools, you should see that analysis tool pack and silver adding addings uh, available. And if you have check mark in front of them, that means you already have it installed. If you don't, it comes with the Excel installation. You just need to add it. For me, I'm using a Mac version of Excel, so I will be able to see it under the insert add-ins and get add-ins. Depends on the version of Excel you have. It may be, uh, you may find it under the files or Excel as an option, etc. So anyways, it's, uh, it should come in with the Excel installation and it's one of the analysis tools. So with the sample set, we want to create a regression model. So we click on the data analysis and choose regression and click OK. Then for the Y range, we want to select the C column, which has the time of delivery, including the header. And for the X range, we use the B column, number of miles driven and we want to check the labels because the first uh, row is the column name. And we want to output it in a local uh, location, for example, in here, so we can easily see. We also want to check the residuals output and the residual plots. Other things, we will keep it as a default, such as confidence level, keep it at 95%. So click OK. This output our regression. Um, so first and foremost, uh, let's take a look at the coefficient for the intercept. So this is the B0 we mentioned in our lecture, and it's a constant. And we take a look at the coefficient for the miles. So this is the B1 that we mentioned in our lecture. So with this two information, we can create our regression equation like Y, which is time delivery equals to the intercept 1.2739 plus the uh, slope 0 0.0678 times the x which is the time of delivery so this is our linear regression equation and so using this we can predict um, so predict time will be um, equals to our intercept plus the slope multiplied by number of miles driven. And so we can see that there is a difference between the actual time and the predicted time. And so the difference between them is the residual. So we can calculate the residual that way. Residual equals to the actual time minus the predicted time. So in the case of observation one, we have a positive residual, meaning that our actual time is greater than the predicted time. 
meaning that our regression model underestimated, right? So we can create this for each observation. And so um, I need to make this absolute value. So when we copy the formula uh, to other observations, it doesn't change the value of this. So in my Mac, I use the F4. And you can also, of course, manually type in the dollar sign to make an absolute um, value. So then we can copy that down. And for the residual, we just copy down the formula. So how do we interpret this linear regression equation? This equation means that for each mile driven, time adds up 0 0.0678 hours. So how many minutes is that? We can calculate, multiply by 60 minutes per hour. So that's approximately four minutes. So in other words, for each extra mile driven, then the delivery time will add about four minutes. So let's take a look at the residual plot. It looks like the longer the miles, the more positive residuals, meaning that the more likely the model underestimated. And on the other hand, the shorter the miles, the fewer positive and the more negative, like there's a negative residuals in here. So the model is likely to overestimate. So of course, our data set is very limited and it only have 10 records. So we can't really um, generalize much for the population this way, but at least we can see overall it's not too bad. We have kind of balanced distribution of residuals with a slight pattern. And usually we don't want to see too much pattern in the uh, residuals, it should be random. Next, uh, I will talk about the performance of the model. How do we assess for the model performance? So we take a look at the value called R square. So in this R square, we notice that it has a value of 0 0.66. This means that this regression model can explain more than 66% of the data in the sample. So this is a really good number. R square, as we know, that it range from 0 to 1, and the higher the better. Uh, the higher R square means that the more your model can explain the sample set. And for some social science, even 10 or 20% will be a good number. It means that this model is somewhat useful. And it really depends on the goal and the nature of the analytic problems that you're trying to solve. So one thing to be careful about is that if you see a very high R square, such as 90 or 98%, you have to be careful that it's possible to have a model overfit problem. Model overfit is when you create a model almost perfectly fit your sample set, but not at all for your population. So this kind of model is useless. Okay, so you have to watch out for super high R square as well. With the 66% R square, there are still ways to improve it. So you may consider adding more features to the model if you have other uh, features or data. Features are attributes or other variable, independent variables. When you have a lot of independent variables, you may want to apply the feature selection techniques to find out the most impactful field and to include it in your model. In my other video, I will talk about the multiple regression using more than one independent variables. And I will mention about the feature selection and predictive model matrix, such as RMSE, using the analytics over. So another way of looking at the distribution is using the scatter chart. So we highlight this and uh, insert chart. and then XY scatter. So on this um, scatter chart, we can add a trend line, add chart element, a linear trend line. And if we right click on the trend line, we can format the trend line by adding the equation and the R square value on the chart. For example, we can see that there are three driving assignments that's driven 100 miles. They are number one, three and four. We can see that this one is driving assignment number three because it's driven 100 miles and it took 8.9 hours in here. And then in the residual plot, 
this one is the um, assignment three because it's driven 100 miles and the residual is 0 0.84 and we can see that the residual is 0 0.84 so we can see in both residual plots and in the scatter plot this way and we can see that most of the observations are closely uh, aligned around this regression line which is really good and so the predicted time we calculated will be matching the predicted time in the residual output as well. And the residuals we calculated manually also matches the residual uh, in the output table in here. Lastly, the R square is based upon um, SSR, meaning sum of square due to regression, and out of the SST, which is sum of square of total. And so if we do the calculation of SSR divided by SST, and we have the 66%. And if we are uh, verifying the formula of SST, so this one is R square equals to SSR divided by SST. If we want to verify that SSR plus SSE equal to SST, then let's verify SSR plus SSE equals to SST. So lastly, another important matrix to look at in here is the p-value. So we can ignore the p-value for intercept because intercept is just constant. But let's take a look at p-value for the miles. So we can see that 0 0.00408 is a very small number. It's less than 0 0.05. So we call p-value less than 0 0.05 to be statistically significant at a confidence level of 95%. So that is to say that the independent variable miles is statistically significant uh, to the dependent variable time. If we have a p-value that's even smaller, if it's less than 0.01, that means it's statistically highly significant at a confidence level of 99%. So it means that less than one in a thousand mistakes. The lower the p-value, the more impactful of the variable is to the model. So we can also use the p-value to perform simple feature selection.